Welcome back to Factorio Demystified. This tutorial will focus on basic handcrafting and also deploying and making use of the machines that we craft. Our character icon, lower left, we can click on that or just press E. And it brings up our character screen. Of course, we have seen this inventory before, but the crafting on the right is new. This shows us all of the items we can produce or craft at this point in the game. And they're divided into different panels or sections. Each one has their own tooltip dedicated to tell us about them. And let's say we wanted to craft some more magazines, but we weren't sure where they were, don't want to manually hunt through everything. We can do a control F or we can just click on the magnifying glass there. Brings up a search bar and okay, now a few letters knocks it down to combat and there's our firearm magazine. Now the numbers that we see on some of these icons tell us how many of that item we can currently craft from our items in our inventory. So we could, for example, craft eight pipes currently, but no small electric poles don't have all the ingredients for that. The red background, such as this stone brick has, tells us it's one of the rare items that I can't actually handcraft at all. It requires another machine, in this case, a furnace. I do wanna craft some furnaces now anyway, so we'll head over to production. To do that, we simply hover, we click once with the left button, and we get one item. We right click once, and we get five items. You can see the progress going down there. And then if we shift left click, it's gonna produce all of them, even if it's hundreds. You wanna be careful with that. And these are reversible as well too. If you have items being crafted down here, then you left click, it removes one, right click, it removes five, and so on. Now I don't wanna craft a whole bunch of items right now. I want us to get used to what these items actually do, and then we'll know where we're going from there. The quick bars down here, active quick bars, are very, very key to us. They aren't actually additional storage space. What they are is quick reference slots or shortcuts. So let's move some items down there. Left click, put it in place, and then just Q to drop that from our cursor so we can grab more. And eventually you are going to want to move items. Maybe you decide, okay, I don't want this wood here anymore. Well, just middle click, boom, and it's gone. And now we'll bring it back. And of course, the point of this is I don't have to constantly now be getting in and out of our character screen. I can access any of these right here. And I don't even have to click on them. The top active quick bar, if I want, say, the item that's in the first slot in it, I just push one. And there it goes. It's right in my hand. I push three, and the wood appears. All of that is excellent. One through zero. Now, maybe I want the second one to be on top. I'm just going to push X and it'll rotate through them. I can get additional quick bars down there by escape, settings, interface. This is not a mod, this is not a hack. You simply select one through four for the number of active quick bars you want. But that's active quick bars. There are actually more than the four. If we click here, we're gonna see, okay, the numbers go all the way up one through zero. There's 10 of them. Why so many? Well, maybe you want some for a certain type of construction, some for other type of construction. Maybe you want some for exploring or for doing various other items or for combat. They're all different types of situations we're gonna end up in. And so being able to switch back and forth between these can be very powerful for quick access to the items that you want. Let's say I don't want this quick bar right now. Let's say I want number six, shift six. I wanna get it back, shift one, or I can get number seven or number nine, and then go back to where I was. So really a powerful, flexible system there. Now let's get to know our machines specifically. We have our stone furnace. It says it consumes burnable fuel. So we don't wanna to try to put it down on an obstruction. Obviously dead gray trunk is in the way. And if it gets too far away from us, it'll tell us it's out of range. But aside from that, anywhere where this is showing up green, I can just place it. And I can also, place ghosts by shift left clicking and what this is going to do for me is just allow me the possibility of planning out like I can put a few things down without actually physically placing the item and then I can perhaps do other kinds of machines around and then okay I found the design this is how I want it maybe I'm going to get rid of this one and place this one or whatever and of course you're right clicking to remove these items just like anything else there's also click drag functionality so I can just, you know, put down a whole bunch of them at once in a ghost manner or flat, just throw them on there. Now, if we are going to look at what these actually do, we can see 
that we have, okay, it says no fuel. So let's left click and dive into this. We have three different fields that we want to consider ourselves with. We have fuel, needs wood or coal or three other fuels that we have not yet progressed to. And these are the possible inputs that we could put in there. And then if we have an ingredient and a fuel, we're going to get a result. So let's put in some wood, although notice that the wood's fuel value is two megajoules and the coal is four megajoules. So coal will last twice as long. It's generally the fuel of choice early in the game. So let's put in some stone and see what happens. Well, progress bar, you can see this fuel going down. We can see that we're producing some stone bricks. Well, that worked well, but we're out of ingredients. Let's put some copper ore in there. Worked fine too, but okay, now our output is full. We can only store internally one type of product. So we have to remove the bricks. There we go. Now we've got our copper back in place. Now, if we deconstruct this building, we are going to lose the partially used fuel, but you'll get everything else back. If we right click here, you can see we got the one wood, not the partially used one and then we have our copper plate. There's no such thing as holding a partially used amount of fuel. That's simply not something the game allows. Now we've got our burner mining drill. These are a little different because we can't just place them anywhere. Must be built on resources, but we can build it on copper. We can build it, or that's coal rather, but coal or copper. And we can hit R to rotate it. It's pointless to rotate a stone furnace because it doesn't matter which way it's facing. But on these drills, you can see the yellow arrow. That's pointing the direction the output will be. So we'll place that. Again, it wants fuel. But these are simpler. You don't need an ingredient. It's simply, it's going to take whatever is beneath it. It's going to mine that and produce copper ore in this case. So if we put some fuel in there, away it goes. And then we can see, okay, it's dumping some copper on the ground. And now it stops. It stops because it has no space in the destination. It needs room here. Now we can press F to pick this up if we're really close to it. Or if it's just the one item, we can just as easily just right click from distance and use you know, the mining impact. Well, it's just gonna keep right on going and picking this up all the time is gonna be a real pain in the butt. There are better ways. We could put a chest down there to store it or we can just sort of cut out the middleman and put directly right next to it. And this is a very common, powerful combination in the early game. We're simply going to put a furnace there. And we're going to drop in some fuel into that furnace. So as long as both of these have fuel, we'll keep mining copper, putting the copper ore directly in here, and then smelting that into plates. That pretty much covers it on the basic machines and techniques we need to know for the time being. The process of investing in more advanced capabilities will begin when Factorio Demystified returns. Thanks for watching, everyone.